Olá, o escritor que hoje junta a nós é o mestre dos thrillers históricos. Ken Follett nasceu no país de Gales e conta histórias de suspense e espionagem situadas em períodos históricos específicos ou então narra grandes sagas como os Pilares da Terra. Escreve um romance por ano e já vendeu cerca de 100 milhões de exemplares, tendo alguns dos seus livros sido já adaptados para o cinema. Ele vive em Londres, onde o vim encontrar. Ken, hi. Hi. Um, how come being a Welshman, so many books of yours are American? Uh, well, a lot of exciting things happen in the United States. When I wrote um, The Third Twin, for example, I could imagine the American military doing an experiment in genetic engineering, but I couldn't imagine the British military, you know, with their moustaches and their evening dress and so on. I couldn't imagine them getting involved in something like that. So for that particular story, an American setting seemed appropriate. But I've written uh, um, Americans, uh, I'm very happy to say, by my stories that are set in England as well. I Have the Needle, my first success. Mm -hmm. has no American characters and none of it set in the United States and it was a huge bestseller there. Mm -hmm. uh, you took a degree in philosophy. Yeah. Uh, how does one go from Plato and Nietzsche to uh, suspenseful thrillers? Well, you, in order to study philosophy and take it seriously, you have to have a funny kind of imagination. You know, philosophers say, what if all this wasn't real? this room that we're in? What if we were imagining it or dreaming it? Now some people, if you're a literal minded person, you say, don't be silly. It's not a dream. But if you want to study philosophy, you have to say, okay, yeah, what if it was all a dream? Isn't that weird? How do we know? And that's how philosophy goes on. So you have to be imaginative, and that's the connection. Mm -hmm. All novelists are imaginative people who are always saying to themselves, what if it was different? What if this was You know, what if we were in outer space and this was all an illusion? Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that your first big su success was I uh, of the Needle. Uh, what made it work in your opinion compared to the, your previous two novels? Uh, well, I had in fact written ten novels before oh, ten, I of the Needle. Uh, it, it was the first book that I planned. And ever since then, I've planned my novels in great detail. Now I spend about a year planning the book before I start to write it. In the early days I didn't do that. Eye of the Needle was the first one I planned. It was also the first book I researched and that has become very important to me. Because Eye of the Needle is set in the Second World War, which is before I was born, I had to research it to find out the details of everyday life in Britain during the war. And that gave the book, the fact that I'd done that research, gave the book a feel for the grain of everyday life that my previous books had lacked. Mm -hmm. uh, and the third thing was pace. My early books went too fast. They were too short. And uh, I, I had not learned to draw out the drama in a scene in my early books. And Eye of the Needle was the first book in which I succeeded in doing w that. When you say you prepared the book, you mean You mean uh, the previous books, when you wrote them, you didn't know how, how you would finish them or develop exactly. them, and here you, you did know. Yes, I used to begin, when I wrote my first novel, I had only the vaguest idea of what it was going to be about, and I just sat at the typewriter and typed chapter one, okay. and let my imagination take me wherever it would. And for me, that's not a good way to write a book. For me, it's much better if I figure out what the end is. For example, At the end of the story, all the major characters should either be very happy or very disappointed. Mm -hmm. Ideally, the characters we like should get what they want and triumph, and the ones we hate should be destroyed. And that's, mm -hmm. Most stories go like that. But if you don't... So you have to decide the most end. Most fictional stories. Yeah. <laughs> not the true ones. Not, uh, sadly, no. Life is not like that, but fiction is. Mm. But in order to do that, you have to know what the ending is going to be, so that at the beginning you can decide what these people want and what they fear. So for me, planning turned out to be essential. Mm -hmm. um, when I was reading in you know, um, uh, Code Co to Zero, w the, the, the book starts with um, a man who wakes up and does, know, does not know who he is. Uh, with the Pillars of the Earth, uh, You begin the book with um, 
a hanging, a public hanging. Now, uh, how important are, are for you, 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 you were mentioning endings, but how important are for you beginnings? Well, the beginning is important because you have to cast a spell over the reader. It's like a magic spell. And you have to do it very quickly. If the reader doesn't become involved in the story in the first few pages, you'll probably lose him or her. The reader has to treat the story as if it's real and has to care. Reading novels is emotional. So you have to care about what's happening. So in the early pages of the story, you have to introduce the reader to people that he or she either likes or hates quite early. You have to you have to have that emotional involvement of the reader very early on. Of course, and there, there's no one way to do it. There are a mm -hmm. thousand ways yeah. of doing it, but it's the emotions that count. But uh, w what is it more important for you, beginnings or endings? If you have it's to choose, gotta be the have to choose. It's got to yeah. be the beginning, because if you don't get the beginning right, they, they throw the book away. So you've lost them. There's no point in having a good ending, because nobody will ever get there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you wrote basically stories uh, set within historical periods. Um, what is it about history that you enjoy so much? Because all your stories are set here or there, but in, in periods of time, uh, which is uh, something that differ differentiates you compared to other authors. In the yes, a lot of authors have the ability to make their own time and their own place somehow fascinating. And, uh, for example, Ian McEwan is such an author. His stories are all set in the present. Uh, they're mostly set in London, or at any rate in England. But somehow he makes these streets that I walk down every day somehow very interesting, fascinating, enchanting somehow. Now, I've never had the ability to do that. I find it very difficult to write in a fascinating way about the street that I live in and the town that I live in. But if I go back, even just a few years, maybe just to the 60s or to the Second World War, then somehow, I f because I find that fascinating, I'm able to make that environment interesting to readers.